right, so I got my drawings now. One, two, three, four. I can now roll flip these. My next pencil test. So we put all the drawings in between our fingers like this. And we can now flip them this way to see whether or not they're moving properly. I'm just letting them fall in sequence. Okay. So what I might want to do is, based on this action here, because I'm going from this position to this position here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify this body position here slightly. I'm going to make this curve this way, but I'm going to put a slight upper curve here. Just a little bit of an S curve right here. So the line of action on my body, this is my transition pose here. So instead of doing this drawing here, I'm actually doing this drawing here. Which means that everything in this one between these two is going in this direction here. The lower part of the pelvis is, or the spine is moving forward. The upper part of the pel spine is moving forward. In this drawing here, I'm reversing the curve now on this part here even though it's still coming down. I'm reversing the curve on it to make the transition to this drawing here better. Because when I go from a C curve in this direction here to a C curve in the opposite direction, remember the very first in-betweens that I asked you to do? Remember the sheet of paper that I gave you that had the boxes and the balls and the lines on it? And we had these two lines here. And I asked you an in-between. Some people did this, the straight line in-between. Well, that's like a ruler being bent from one position to another. It's just mathematically bending. So here's now where we have to decide what's moving at what point in time. So I could have done this, which is what I had originally planned in my first drawing, or I can reverse the curve on this side here and keep the curve on this part here going forward while this one reverses back in this direction here. Okay, There's that theory in play right here in my spine. Okay. So here's where we're taking those, those simple little exercises we did way back at the very beginning, the principles of how animation works and the movements work, and now we're applying it to a larger type of an action. And this is something that we always have to keep track of in our mind. Why are things moving from one position to another, and how are they moving from one position to another? So here's where we get into yet another realm, which I touched on earlier, just slightly, in that when we talked about the timing charts, way back here, there's my timing charts. When we talked about the timing chart issue, okay, I spoke to you about the idea of shooting stuff on ones and twos. Okay, that's the length of time that it's exposed to your eyes for. What we're talking about with the timing charts, the actual chart position here, is the spacing of where you put one line in relationship to another line. So if I have drawing number one and drawing number six, those are my key positions which, if I put it in really simplistic terms, is a line is here, a line is here. And I'm moving this line from this position to this position across the screen. My timing chart says number four is the halfway position. So I physically find the halfway position in between those two. So if I'm moving it from here across to here, I'm keeping the body of the line stiff it's straight up and down all the way through. But that's not necessarily what I want to do. Okay. There's nothing to say that I can't do this. From this position to this position, this is my start position, this is my stop position. But how I get there is up to me. I could do this if I wanted to. My line is simply compressing, turning into an S, and then popping back out of it again. Okay, It's like I'm going from here and I'm going woo -woo, like that. Start, stop, in between, it's that action. Or it's going from here and I'm going like this. And I end up like that. Okay, so my in between could be like this. But then you have to decide what part of this line is halfway. Right now, physically, this is the halfway point. Between here and here, mathematically, that's halfway. This is not halfway. Because you can see the distance between the two. It's not. Halfway is over here. So it's slightly further forward. This is not halfway. So that means that as it moves from one position to another, there's a drag, there's a pull. Part of it is moving faster, part of it is moving slower. Part of it is moving exactly halfway. 
So here's again where we make decisions of where do we put our lines. A halfway is not necessarily a mathematical halfway. It all depends on how you want it to get there. And this is where your analysis of the action comes into play. You have to know in your head what it is that you want your character to do from one position to another. Not to say that you can't modify it as I did here. You can modify it at any point you want. Because who's in control of the pencil? Me. I am. I control this pencil. Okay. I can't just put the pencil and go, animate. Mm, come on, animate. It's not going to do it. Right? I control the pencil. So therefore, I make the decisions. I can make my decision any point in time I want. I could take this drawing and go, go like it, I'm going to change it, and do a new drawing. That's my decision. If it makes it better, then that's the good. Okay. So, don't be afraid to make changes and decisions midway through your drawing. Don't be afraid to take all the drawings that you've done that you've slaved on for five and a half hours and go, this is not working, and scrap it, and start all over. Happens all the time in the industry when you're working on stuff. If you work away at something and your director looks at it and they go, you know what, that's just not the way I want it. And there's nothing you can salvage within that. They'll say, throw it out, start again. And you do, you start all over. In some cases you can take things and modify them maybe keep one or two poses that really work in it, and then go from there. Okay? But sometimes you don't. You just scrap the whole thing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get from this position here to this position over here. Okay. So now I have to decide how many drawings I'm going to have in between number four and this drawing here, whatever that drawing is. So if I look at my, back at my timing chart, here's my timing chart here that I was going to go with originally number five, if I make this one number six here, I need number five in there. So I've got a one single in-between between these two here right, to decide how fast or how slow this is going to go. So I indicated that I wanted a favor there, which means that I'm closer to this position here. I'm going to ease up into it. So I'm going to go from this position here up into this position here. So I'm going to put a little bit of a stretch on this. And I've got to get that body curling up. Now what I want to do here, again, is this is the decision that you can make at this point, is going from this low position down here to this high position here. I don't necessarily want to put this as a halfway, or maybe I do want to put it as a halfway, but I don't want to put it as a favor. Because if I put it as a favor, it's going to be way up here like this. And I don't necessarily like the idea of going from all the way down here all the way up to here, because A, the favor to this point here suggests that the arc is going in this direction here. But I want to create that pull that creates the seaweed, which means that my spine should actually be going this way. And that should be the positioning of my body there. See, that looks better. And it puts drag on this part here. Which, once I put on the character's head, I can add even more drag to it by putting the character's head way down here like this. So I'm going to go from this position here, where the character's head would be up here, like that, and then snap it to this position here, like that, and then pull it up to this position here, but have it still dragging on this one. And then as I start to come down in my opposite position, it'll drag in the opposite direction. So there's my overlapping action that takes place. Okay. So now I've got to get my leg from this position, which is here, there's my foot position there, and I want to start to push off in this drawing here. So I want a straight leg, toe down, bent, foot position like this, which means that I'm propelling the body up into the air in that position. So the foot's pulling back, pushing up, and I'm driving it up into this position here, which this leg is going back to this leg here. Okay, because i got to get to you. There's my other drawing. It was the opposite of that one. That's number six there, right? So, right, that's the far leg. Okay. So this is actually my crotch right here, overlapping in front of it. So 
but that's the leg that's in the back. Okay. The leg that's hidden there is going to go to this position here, and it's going to go back to that position there. Okay. So, now I've decided that's the action that I'm going to have. Let's take these off, flip them, and see what the one half looks like. See how that makes my character pop Blink. right up into that position there? Now it's a little bit of an optical illusion because it looks like that leg becomes this leg forward here, but it's actually the leg back there. So I gotta put my other leg in in order to make it read properly. So let's go back now and let's do the in-betweens for the legs. So I wanna go from this back leg position here, swinging it forward into this position here. And number three was my halfway position. <clears throat> I'm going from there to there. So here's where I'm going to apply a little bit of a drag idea. See my foot? So I've pulled the toe, so it's curving. So that's your pendulum swing, so it's swinging like this, so I'm putting a curvature on it like this to make the toe drag a little bit more instead of making the toe lead. Right? So it just adds a little bit of an overlapping action to it. Back of the leg there. And I can actually modify this drawing as well, just slightly, just put a little bit of a drag on it. Forward. So now I'll go back and drop my number two in between in. So what I could do here is I can actually go beyond this point here. Remember, well, actually I can't do it but I can put a little bit of a pull on it like that. Yeah, so I can actually kick it in the opposite direction a little bit there. Okay, so that's like my pendulum swing where the ball goes beyond, up and beyond, and then comes back. So this part here is all coming down. This part here is still going up. So there's my pendulum swing theory in play. This creates a little bit of a delayed overlapping action. So one, two, three, four, and then I got another five and six. Here's my six, I'll do my five in between here. So now I'm pulling my leg from this position here forward to this position here. Take a look at that now flip. <coughs> that works pretty good now. Gives a nice little snap into the upper position there. That's not to say that I can't go back. Like let's say when I when I take this and I'll do a pencil test of it, see what it looks like shot all on twos. That's not to say that I can't go back now and drop another in between between these two drawings here and make that a favor to the foot. And maybe a favor up into this point here curling up and shoot that on ones or shoot it on twos and see how it looks. Okay, Just so long as I do the exact same thing on the opposite side to make it symmetrical. Okay? But again, that's that's a timing issue that I can deal with later on. So that now gives me my one half on the one side there, not counting the arms, which I'm going to do next. Right. 
So let's take our two key positions here, one and six. Just put a circle around this to make sure I know that it's a key. Okay, so my arms are going from this position to this position here. So I've got my in-betweens here, my four in-betweens. So now I get to choose which is my halfway position on this. So by looking at the action forward and back, here's my arm in the forward position here. I'm going to be swinging it back to this position here. So arm is going from here back to here. And I've got four drawings to do it in. So from my forward position, what I'll probably want to do is I'll probably want to do a reversal that goes like this. So that this part is going back in this direction here while the hand still continues forward to create my overlapping action. Then I'll want to have a drawing that comes like this to this position here. And then probably a drawing that favors over here into this position here. All right. So my action is going like that and then swinging back there. Is there any point between this point here and this point here that is halfway on the tip? No. Is there a point on the shoulder which is halfway? Yes, right there. So this is my halfway drawing right here. So if this is drawing number one, two, three, four, actually I need one more, so I got four in between, sorry. Um, so what I could do is I could put an in between in here, to ease into that position, or I could put another in between right here which snaps the hand out which might be kind of cool so that'll make this part here go slower and then fast back into this position here which means I would probably modify this position here slightly to there I think that would probably work better so this would be my number one my number two my number three this is my number four position over here and there's my number five so four is actually my halfway Drawing number four is my halfway position. So, take this. There's my body. Now here's where it gets kind of fun. Because look where my body is. It's way forward over here. But yet I've got to get this position on the arm, the halfway position, that's going from here back to here. So my arm tip is here, and it's going back to over here. The halfway position between those two is right there. So therefore, my arm in this drawing has to basically look like this. That's the way it would look. So the shoulder is not halfway physically. It's actually way forward over here. Because I didn't consider my path of action on the upper torso. But the theory is still the same. So I have to maintain the path of action for the hand. It's got to appear that it's swinging back from this position here, back up into that position, but the upper torso is pulling it forward. It's a weird anomaly, right? Okay, so I go back now to my chart over here. My number three position is that forward arm position, so I'll just go back here. And this is not actually a matter of pure in-betweening, it's just understanding the theory of what you want it to do. So therefore my shoulder is going to be here and my hand is going to be snapped forward into this position right here. So it's going to pop from this one to this one here. And that's simply because I still need my in-between, my transitional in-between in there. See this part here is not bad. That's a pretty big movement there. So I may want to go back and modify this one here. So now we'll go in here and do my number two in between, which is my S curve. So now this one's more straightforward because my path of action on my shoulder is coming to here. Right, now I want to do my S curve, so I'm going to go in this direction here and this direction here with the hand. Doing a little bit of a flick action there. Okay. And then my number four, I am going to modify that one slightly. 
just so it doesn't swing back quite so violently there, from there to there. I'm going to modify that so it's right about here instead. That's better. And then I can go from 5 for 4 to 6. With my path of action on my shoulder going from here up to here. So then I'm going to go like that. 